So a little bit on the regulatory framework. Uh, we had MAP 21. The name always kills me, moving ahead for progress in the 21st century. I think it was great that there was funding relief in the form of lower interest rates, basically a 25 year average. But the PBGC premium increases, I, I have a I have just a really, really bad feeling about that. The premiums are going up, not not in a, in a small way over the next few years. And uh, the fear is that, you know, this is gonna drive, just drive more and more sponsors out. The variable rate premium is going up. The per participant premium, I think is gonna more than double by 2016 or something close to that. And uh, for, for any size company, but particularly larger companies, that, that's a huge expense. And it's not an expense that goes into increasing the funding. It's basically a tax, because you're paying that, that premium to a governmental agency to help support the failures of others, of, of other plans. So that, that's, that's very troubling, but that's, that's the world that exists today. Uh, Pension Protection Act, I, I won't go through that, but you know, the, the benefits restriction concept is, is very much in, still in existence. Are, are people aware of what benefit restrictions are? Just briefly, benefit restrictions result, there's basically boiling points, and they're dependent upon the funded stats. So, um, for instance, if, if the funded position of a plan goes below 80%, that means that uh, full lump sums can't be paid to participants. That can be important if you have a participant planning on a lump sum, notably an executive, and uh, find, finds out that he or she can't take that lump sum. Below 60%, plan needs to automatically be frozen immediately if it hasn't already been frozen. So th these are just a couple of the restrictions that exist. Uh, in a volatile rate in um, funded status environment, these come in and out of favor.